Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Shepherd of the Lake. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is he risen is indeed. Hallelujah. Boy, that's a good sound. <laughs> uh, a few announcements before we get started. Our study on the book of Revelation is starting this Wednesday. And uh, rather than trying to look at all the many, many things we could look at in Revelation, there's a lot that could be talked about. Our central question is going to be, how do Lutherans read the book of Revelation? And so we're going to start this with that small, small thing. Uh, so if you're interested, I hope you can come out. It'll be on Wednesdays. There's a blurb on it in the bulletin there. Today is our, our potluck and voters meeting following service. Hope you will stick around for that. Um, also, card making is, is starting up again October 31st. Oh, that's, it's Tuesday, I believe. Also, uh, Kathy's got a, a plea for help here. She says, can everyone let, let, let her know what your favorite hymns are? Uh, she'll, she'll put them in during the communion time when we, when we hear the music. So check that out. Um, I've got an All Saints Day sign-up. It's on the bulletin board. Uh, basically what this is, is if you have a loved one who, who died believing in Jesus uh, recently, and you want to honor and remember them, we're, I, I'm probably just going to um, lift up those people in prayer, something like that, and the families. Yeah? How recent is recently? Yeah, so I had, I had said on there a year... But I've had, I think, three names on there, so if, if you want to widen it up. I, I just was trying to avoid having like a 300-person list, you know? <laughs> but uh, since we've just got this Sunday, if you've got someone, especially someone still weighing on, on your heart or a family member's heart, please, please sign them up. Someone who's died in the faith. Because so, uh, this Sunday we're celebrating Reformation Sunday, Next Sunday, we'll be celebrating All Saints Day. Anyone got uh, some other announcement? Yeah? Well, I brought a stack of all the cards that I've got set up for Tuesday, so if anybody wants to look at them, come on. Okay. Yeah. Talk to Betty. Make some beautiful cards. Yeah. <coughs> Anything else? All right. Well, with that, we'll get started with our opening hymn. Oh, I gotta say, we're singing the opening hymn a cappella. The reason for this is twofold. One, it's the church's one foundation. We know this hymn well. Two, our organ recording is super fast. And it's kind of hard for us to, to stay up with it, so we're, we're trying to sing a cappella. Um, if this happens to be even worse, you know, let me know. I'm, I'm not trying to <laughs> make things difficult, but I. I think this worked well last time we did it, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll start it out and we can see. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord, she is his new creator. Oh, my. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Revelation chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though, though its waters roar and fall, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dies. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. But be still, and no I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our Lord. Our epistle reading comes from Romans, the third chapter. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now... The righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He's right.
gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. 
He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Savior and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And mercy be unto you. One of the truths of the Reformation is called solar, sola scriptura. Now, the, the less fancy English phrase for that is scripture alone. What it means is that we are to listen to God's word as the only guide for Christian teaching and living. This means also that we are not to listen to what our culture says about how we are to live. We are not to listen to the Pope or the government or anything or anyone other than God's word alone. Now certainly God's word in Romans chapter 13 tells us to obey the governing authorities. So we do that, but we also hear that we must obey God rather than men. So if the government's telling us to do things against what the Bible says, we listen to God's word alone. So let's listen to the gospel passage I just read for us, the one from Matthew. In it, we hear that the kingdom of heaven comes in weakness. As Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. It doesn't sound like a very strong kingdom. It can be attacked. It can be damaged. It can suffer violence. It makes sense if you think about it a little while. For on the one hand, the one who brought the kingdom of heaven near, namely Jesus, suffered all kinds of violence. He was rejected and crucified. Again, John the Baptist, who Jesus says is Elijah to come, uh, because he preached repentance and turned the hearts of the children to their fathers and the fathers to their children, well, he also would be beheaded in prison. And many messengers of the gospel after this would be killed or otherwise persecuted. So certainly the kingdom of heaven is under attack in, in, in physical ways like this, with people literally being attacked or killed. But the kingdom of heaven is also under attack by ears that will not listen. Jesus described this and how the crowds failed to listen both to John and to Jesus. He compared that generation to children sitting in the marketplace and uh, playing a game, basically, calling out to their playmates, we played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not mourn. Now the reason why these children described that generation is because they refused to listen to Jesus and to John. Instead, the crowd expected the opposite to happen. They expected for Jesus and John to listen to them and to do what they said. On the one hand, they, the crowd wanted John to play pretend wedding and to sing and dance. But John did not listen to the crowd. He came preaching a hard word of repentance. Now again, the crowd wanted Jesus to play the opposite kind of game, to play a game of funeral and to sing dirges and to mourn. But Jesus did not do this. He did not even follow the, any of the Sabbath traditions. Rather, Jesus was a friend of sinners and tax collectors, even healing many of them on the Sabbath. So the crowds expected Jesus and John to listen to them. But really, they were to listen to Jesus and John. So how does this apply to us today? Well, Jesus' words first described that particular generation. However, his rebuke certainly describes the crowds of our day as well. Indeed, St. Paul described how future generations would be unwilling to listen to God's word. As he wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 4, The time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers 
who suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Well, Paul knew what was coming, uh, and so too today we see this happen. And in the same way that the crowds complained that John and Jesus wouldn't listen to them, so too there are crowds today that complain when we will not listen to them. These crowds even expect us to listen to them instead of to God's word. For instance, I know a, a substitute teacher who was wondering if she should teach or not. She happens to be a Christian, but she was told she would be fired if she taught against LGBT. Um, again, this mass shooting in Maine. God gave us the command, you shall not murder. Someone not listening to God's word. I myself have been harassed um, for teaching that only men are to be pastors. As Paul teaches in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now being Christians surrounded by those who do not want to listen to God's word tempts us in two ways. On the one hand, God's word can seem foolish to us. You hear of many homosexual people practicing their sin, being married, even being celebrated in the sin. You hear of many women being ordained as pastors. You hear of many people changing their genders. <clears throat> Compared to God's word, which opposes all of those things, God's word can seem kind of foolish. You know, the neighbors down the street are doing it. Maybe God's word is, uh, you know, it's behind the times. It's not relevant anymore. All these kind of things we can be tempted to think. Now, others of us know God's word is true. Yet we're tempted to despair because so many people have rejected it. Jesus said it this way in his parable of the sower. God's word is like a seed planted in soil. But the world, in all of its deception, its lies, is like thorns that seeks to choke out the word in a person. Many of you feel the pressure of the world seeking to choke the word in its way. So whether we're tempted to see God's word as foolishness or we're tempted to despair of God's word, we can all struggle to listen to and to defend God's word. Our passage gives us good news in Jesus' final sentence. He said this, Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. In other words, although John and Jesus and what they preach seemed like foolishness, it would be justified. Indeed, even though John the Baptist was killed in prison, yet because Jesus is true, even John will be raised from the dead. He will be saved from the sins against which he preached and called for repentance. His preaching of repentance will be shown to be true. Again, wisdom has been justified by her deeds through Jesus. For time and time and time again, Jesus showed that the kingdom of heaven had come near through himself. We see this in all of the miracles that he did. For where Jesus was, the effects of sin could be removed. For instance, the religious leaders did not want Jesus to heal a, a man's withered hand because it was the Sabbath. But in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus did so. The kingdom of heaven had come near in his miraculous act. Again, a, a blind, mute, demon-oppressed man was brought to Jesus. And Jesus healed the man. In Jesus, the kingdom of heaven was brought near. Now, well, wisdom was justified in Jesus' deeds through his miracles. What sees it most clearly justified in the central teaching and reality of our faith. For although the religious leaders of Israel rejected Jesus and had him crucified, yet God vindicated him 
upholding Jesus to be right, his preaching to be true, and in line with God's wisdom. For God raised Jesus from the dead. Now the result of wisdom being justified by Christ's resurrection is wonderful. For by the power of God's word and through the working of the Holy Spirit, God transformed his disciples. For they had been so scared after Jesus was crucified that they hid themselves behind locked doors. And then their chief speaker, Peter, he went off and he denied Jesus three times. But what happened? The resurrected Jesus appeared to them, and it completely transformed them. Even Peter, who had just denied Jesus, became bold to preach this resurrected Jesus. And in the resurrection, the disciples were able to listen to God's word again, and even go out and preach and defend it. This is good news for us today as we seek to listen to God's word and defend it. Well, it's true that the world sees God's word as foolishness, yet God has revealed that it is wisdom to us. Indeed, Paul made this clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For there he wrote, Because of him, that is God, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us <coughs> wisdom from God. In other words, God grants us the ability to see Jesus' death and resurrection for what it is. It is the wisdom of God, who loved us so much that he shed the blood of his only son to make a payment for all of our sin. Now, even as the resurrected Jesus made God's wisdom known to the disciples, so he makes his wisdom known to us. He gives us faith as a gift. And it enables us to listen to and to defend God's word, even in the face of so many who do not. The result of God, uh, of wisdom being justified by her deeds in Jesus, builds us up today. For to those of us who have been called, Christ's crucifixion is the power and wisdom of God. And just as the resurrected Jesus sent out his disciples in all boldness to proclaim his word, so Jesus sends us out today. And he is able to make us bold to listen to his word and to defend its truth. Even if we were like Peter, who had denied him earlier, God's able to do this for us through Jesus. Therefore, I urge you to listen to God's word. And to defend it. Although the world sees God's word as foolishness, yet it is the wisdom of God. And this has this wisdom emboldened Jesus' first disciples. So God emboldens us to listen to and defend his word. Here's a way you could defend God's word. If you know the scriptures well, especially the ones that are being opposed by, by people all around us, Share what God's word says. That's all you got to do. Just point them to the passage. If you don't know those scripture passages, uh, come to Bible study, or let's let's meet up and talk, or you know, read your Bible, um, learn about these things. Even now, if you haven't done any of those things, a simple thing you can do to to listen to God's word and to defend it is if someone starts telling you something you know to be wrong, that's not that's against the Bible, you can say, no, God's word did not lie. Simply say that. That would be a defense of God's word. That you can so may God grant each of us boldness, both to listen to his word and to defend his truth. In Jesus' name. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We rise and continue with the creed. <clears throat> I believe in God.
God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, sustain your church. Deliver her from error and preserve in her the proclamation of your gospel, that it would resound to every nation, tribe, people, and language, and that all may fear and give you glory. Lord, in our mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, bless all ministers of your word. Help them rightly to preach your law so that all are held accountable to you without excuse. And to joyfully proclaim your gospel that all would know Jesus Christ as their Savior and begin to live according to your word. Lord, in our mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, Look with compassion on all who are blind to the bondage of their sin. Open their eyes by the words of Jesus and grant them the true freedom of sonship and a permanent place in your household. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, make us truly your disciples. Keep us in your word, free us from all errors, and make our homes and families peaceful. Preserve all fathers and encourage them in their godly task, that children will be brought up in the fear and instruction of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, bless all civil authorities, especially our president, Congress, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Protect them from the temptations that beset their offices. Grant them courage and wisdom to serve with integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, be near to all who cry to you for healing of body and soul. We lift up to you, especially those near and dear to us in this place for their various needs. Asking that you would be with Dolores and Millie, Dennis and Libby, Bonnie, Leah, Stanley, Rogetta's nephew and friend, Randy, Elaine, Inga, Bruce, Roger, Candy, Jim, Carmen, Butch, the family of Gracie, and Noel. We also ask that you would be with all the families in Maine from this shooting in their grief. And if they do not know you, we ask that you would help them to know you and the hope of the resurrection. Grant them all release from their afflictions according to your will. Sustain their hope they know you in the full and final healing that awaits them at the day of Christ's appearing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, bless all who come to the altar to partake of Christ's own body and blood for the forgiveness of their sins. Grant them repentant hearts that seek to amend their lives and by your spirit, align them with your will and purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty fortress, rock of refuge, we give you thanks for all your servants who have departed this life in faith. We especially bless you today for the great reformers of your church who call us back to the gospel and to the righteousness we have in Christ alone. Keep us in fellowship with them, and bring us at last to our heavenly home to see our Redeemer face to face. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
One God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. You collect the offering. And the next hymn, you'll notice you've got to pull out your hymnal for it. It is number 656. The mighty fortress is our God. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is right. Uh, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, 
Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before we turn the page there, I've got another just explanation of part of the service here. This is the po Pax Domini. Um, that one's Latin. In English, it means the peace of the Lord. Here, the pastor once again announces the forgiveness of sins to the congregation, showing how because of Jesus, we have peace with God. It recalls for us Jesus' Easter greeting, Peace be with you, John chapter 20. A tradition that some congregations still observe is to exchange the peace of the Lord with our brothers and sisters in Christ at this time. This shows how we forgive one another as God has forgiven us and as we prayed in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In this, our confession made at the Lord's Supper 
is not only united in its content, we also make that confession without conflict between those two communities. So we'll continue with the Pax Domini. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Continue with the thank the Lord on page 10. talking about that. I was on my back 80% of the day, two or three days in bed. Um, I'm obviously I'm, you know, recovering pretty well. I was here today, but I would ask for your prayers just in my recovery from that. Uh, and just being able to be wise about being healed and all that. So um, my prayer for you is that you would Go on listening to God's word and defending its truth. You can do that because God gives us this faith as a gift, even though many other people in our lives certainly do not listen to God's word. Um, anyone got another announcement? Okay. Well, my last one is that I'm going to play the guitar, so you got to give me a few minutes. I'll get out of the road, and we'll do that. So. <clears throat>
this, but you're, you're uh, pleased, I encourage you to sing along. We'll be singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> Bye. 